Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be giving you my initial thoughts on the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have been so excited to try this foundation. I love trying new foundations. I love Charlotte Tilbury. I've generally got on beautifully with her base products. So I was very, very excited for this one. It sounds right up my street. So without further ado, let's get started. So this foundation was initially claimed to be launching on the 5th of January, which is today by the magic of time. But it doesn't seem to have launched on Charlotte's actual website yet. In fact, there's actually a time or a clock on Charlotte's website that seems to be saying it's actually launching on the 6th. But this did actually launch early on a couple of retailers here in the UK. I did post about it on my Instagram. If you're not following me, do that because I'll always give you the heads up if something pops up or if something launches earlier and you can get your mitts on it like I did. I will, of course, link it for you in the description box. It may be back up on Charlotte Tilbury any moment or mm -hmm. somewhere else that we can purchase it and not have to wait. So this is a new medium coverage hydrating foundation for a healthy looking glow. It's £34 and you get the standard 30 mils or one fluid ounce in here. The main claims of this foundation are that it gives you beautifully hydrated, plumper, smoother and brighter skin. And it also has brightening rose complex and hydrating hyaluronic acid to improve the look of skin with each wear. It does come in this gorgeous tube, as you can see. It has a pull-off cap with a pump. And I did accidentally discover that if you twist this pump off, that it will fully open the tube. And so that is just amazing because you're gonna be able to squeeze out when you get really low and the pump stops working. You're gonna be able to squeeze this whole tube out very easily without having to break the component. So I think that is a little bonus in there. There's also no SPF in here, which for lots of people will be an absolute win. And for me certainly it is because it's actually hard to find this type of foundation without a ton of SPF in it. So I picked up two shades and I used Charlotte Tilbury's Shade Finder. She has a shade finder on her website. Again, I will link that down below if you're unsure of your shade because this is a slightly different shade range to her previous. So it's not necessarily a guarantee that if you know your shade in one of her other foundations, you'll be the exact same shade in this one because there are different numbers in every one of her foundations. It's quite annoying actually. Can we stop doing that. So in her airbrush flawless foundation in winter, I'm a seven and a half N. I think 7.5 N is my shade. That's an olive undertone, like a neutral olive undertone. So I picked up seven N for that reason, thinking it was probably the closest to the shade I knew I was. This is the shade. Seven N is the shade that her shade finder told me I would be. So I have high hopes for this one, but I also picked up six N. So seven N again is an olive neutral undertone. Six N is a true neutral undertone according to the website. So these are the two shades that I thought I would swatch on my skin for you because they're likely to be the two that if you're around my shade, you might be choosing from. So enough waffling on, let's whack this foundation on my face and see if it lives up to all of those claims. So as per the usual, I'm gonna prime with my Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I was having issues with this with my previous moisturizer, but since I changed my my moisturizer since i changed my moisturizer to a new one i'm now using a the beauty pie vitamin c uh, moisturizer i'm not having any issues it was it was very much the moisturizer that was causing me problems it caused me problems with a few other things as well so here is 6n it's definitely not a bad match i think it's probably closer to like my face against my body it's definitely a bit too light and the undertone is not quite as spot on. And this is 7N. So here we have 6N and 7N. 6N would match my face quite nicely, but 7N is a much better match for like my neck and body, which is what I like to match to. The undertone is just a bit better for me as well because it has that slight olive quality to it, whereas 6N is like a more typical neutral. So I'm just going to, I'm not gonna to bother to take that off, I'm just gonna go with it. So you can probably see like my face is definitely lighter than my body and also some of the redness has kind of 
throws the undertones off but as I'm applying this you can kind of see everything is matching up really nicely with my like neck and chest and shoulders so this would be the shade that I would pick So there is like a very light layer there. I've done a very small amount, really nice natural layer to start off with. And I've probably got like a light medium coverage, very natural looking. It's already starting to show that lovely luminosity that I was expecting. Very natural, but it has done a great job at like calming down redness and just evening out my skin tone, even with that really thin light layer. I can detect like a fresh skincare type of scent, but only when I smell the product. I can't smell it as I'm applying it. So it is definitely a light, fresh, natural skincare type of smell. Not anything that's going to overwhelm anybody or upset anyone's noses, I don't think. So I'm just building up now to see if we can get to that solid medium coverage that I'm expecting from the description for this to give me. Building very, very nicely. It's definitely giving a gorgeous glow to the skin without it being like dewy. Much more luminous than it is dewy. It's giving me a gorgeous, smooth, fresh, healthy glow. Very natural. Like this, one of the claims I think was on the box said it was an undetectable coverage and it kind of reminds me of like the Lisa Eldridge in that way it's like you can't really see the foundation it just is gorgeous skin luminous glow the finish is very different to the Lisa Eldridge lots of people were wanting me to compare this to the Estee Lauder Futurist because I guess the description is quite similar to that one the packaging is quite similar well it's very similar to that one so I think lots of people therefore expecting the foundation to be very similar it's definitely a bit more of a thicker consistency to that one the finish is definitely not as glowy I think the Estee Lauder Futurist it's more dewy this one is like a luminosity and it's not quite as sort of wet shiny as that one it's a hair less glowy i'm just going to add a bit of coverage where there's still some slight uneven skin tone here is the initial finished application no powder no concealer no nothing as yet just the foundation on my skin forehead's looking really nice the body of my skin is looking very smooth glowy fresh healthy flawless very even very flattering on like lines and texture this is kind of my problem area for lots of people it's a problem area you know it's where you have a lot of facial movement and therefore there's lines and texture here it's looking very nice in this area forehead's looking good nose is looking good everything so far is fantastic so i'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and give this a second to dry down so we can see kind of the finish set effect and whether we lose all this gorgeous glow or whether this is kind of what we're gonna see. Okay, so I've finished off my makeup. I used the Nudegasm palette for my bronzer, blush, and highlight, and then I <laughs> and then I used one of the new Luna New Year lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury. This is only Muse, just like a gorgeous peachy everyday lip shade loving this one but back to the foundation so it's probably had about half an hour i didn't hang about today didn't take any prisoners everything is looking gorgeous i didn't set the foundation it's exactly as is the only areas i set i use my concealer my pat mcgrath concealer and powder under my eyes down the bridge of my nose all you know you know where concealer goes we we know that so let's move on but i didn't set the rest of my foundation with powder it does feel slightly tacky still it hasn't fully dried down i think if you want that set feeling you will need to set this with powder otherwise it's going to stay a little with a little bit of tack it's not sticky or greasy and it doesn't look sticky or greasy or like dewy or wet oily looking it's just luminous and it has that slight it hasn't fully dried down and set so if you want that use powder 
The finish is gorgeous. It's just perfect smooth luminosity. It's not that dewy, shiny kind of accentuating texture or areas of discoloration, which a really shiny, dewy foundation does for me. This is like the perfect maximum luminosity without like shine. That's what I love. That's kind of that perfect sweet spot for me. The coverage is definitely like a natural solid medium coverage. I didn't feel the need to build it up any more than I did but I think you could probably get to about a medium to full with this if you really wanted to. It certainly dealt with all my discoloration, all my redness very very easily with a small amount. I think a couple of pumps of this you're going to have a solid medium, beautifully natural, cover everything you kind of really want it to, but still look like skin. So I think as far as coverage, as far as the finish, as far as that smooth appearance, as far as the blurring, it definitely kind of does what it says on the box. It tick, tick, ticked all those boxes for me. It hasn't even sunk into my smile lines, which is quite rare. So let's do a super, super duper close up. There's the forehead. Hopefully camera is focusing on that bad boy. The body of the skin. This I think is an important area to check out because we've got smile lines there. We've got texture on that top lip around the nose. That all looks great. So I did take a flash photo. There is luckily for me no SPF in this foundation so I didn't necessarily expect a terrible bounce back or a huge white cast and I didn't see one which is fantastic. I think a lot of these glowy medium coverage foundations, particularly these ones that appear to come in a tube, they tend to always have a huge amount of SPF in it. That's one of the biggest differences between this one and the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue is that one is definitely going to sell you down the river. If you appear in any flash photography, there's going to be some big white cast, big bounce back, which can be less than ideal in you know if you're out to dinner if you're out for drinks with the girls if you go to a wedding and there's flash photography um, not what we're looking for so far I think it's a beautiful foundation it's right up my street it's just what I'm going for it's just what I like I like some luminosity I like that medium coverage I like the skin like finish so I'm not able to do a long wear test today the time is already half past 11 here. So in order for me to do a check-in, it would need to be at least like seven o'clock, 7.30 for it to be a useful check-in. By that time, this whole room will be pitch black. As you guys know, I film in natural daylight, so I'm not able to do a wear test. You won't be able to see me certainly won't be able to see the foundation. <laughs> but I will let you know in a pinned comment how this wore and how it's wearing. And I will also give you my much deeper thoughts over the course of this month as I wear this. I'll wear this as much as possible over the month of January and I'll let you know my full tested, tried and tested in every situation I get myself into in that month in my January favourites. But for now, it's a beautiful foundation. I mean, you can see it's very natural. It's got that gorgeous luminosity that I love, that I live for in my foundations, that perfect medium coverage. I like the texture. The scent is pleasant, although it's quite mild. I love that there's no SPF in here because for lots of people, that's an issue. For me, it means that I don't want to wear it of an evening when someone one may take a flash photo and it's going to cause me issues. So for me, this is kind of a rarity because this type of foundation generally has a lot of SPF and it means that I can't wear it at night. And this is like a beautiful foundation for an evening. So that for me is a big, big plus. It looks very flattering on my lines and wrinkles, even at this point after, you know, it's probably been an hour or longer since I actually initially applied it. It's still not soaked into smile lines. It's not exa exaggerating lines on my forehead. The Estee Lauder Hydra Rescue does do that. It does exaggerate the lines on my forehead and this one isn't. Everything just looks really smooth and gorgeous and fresh and healthy. It still now feels quite light. It doesn't feel like, I don't feel fresh and hydrated, but it doesn't feel either tight or heavy either. I just feel like 
Yes, I can tell just about that I've got foundation on, but it's light and pleasant. But it doesn't have a real hydrating feel like some skin tints and tinted moisturizers do. So there you have it. Those are my initial thoughts on this new foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. It's certainly a beautiful one. Please let me know in the comment section if you've tried this, how you got on. Let us know what your skin type is so we can see how it's working for different people with different skin types. That's always really, really helpful. For, for others. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.